Have you thought about what your company is worth? I mean, if you sold it today, how much money would you get for it? Now, why is this important? Let me explain what's this important. So we talk to business owners every day, many of them, in fact. And uh, here's what we're learning. You know, we're learning that what entrepreneurs really want is not just better cash flow, hire more people, uh, get more clients, stuff like that. What you probably really want as an entrepreneur or business owner is to have a company that can work without you. Not necessarily meaning that, you know, you're not in the company in any form, but the operations are running smoothly and flawlessly so you can have the life that you dream of, the money, the freedom, the impact, the wealth that you might not be building in your business right now. Welcome, my name is Tobias Dahlberg and I am the founder of The Simple Company. And what we do is we help business owners build companies that work even when they don't, so they can have the money, the freedom, the wealth that they want. And so if you're interested in that, you should go to thesimplecompany.com and talk to us. But in this episode, what I really wanna talk about is the worth of your company, the value of your company, because what we are seeing, and this is very, very important, is that especially people who own service businesses and especially within service businesses, professional service businesses, agencies, consultancies, any type of companies where you're providing a service for companies, the number one reason that, you know, companies are, sorry, uh, business owners are struggling is that they are operators and it's really universal. That's like, we call it the big entrepreneur, you know, the big problem with entrepreneurship is that, you know, companies don't really work out for most people because they are the operators. They're wearing many jobs or many hats, if you will, which means essentially they're not really business owners or entrepreneurs by definition. They own jobs. And unfortunately, they own many jobs and they're working for themselves, uh, whether that's good or bad, you know. But so what I want to, to bring to your attention is that let's say you're like a lot of people that we are talking to and a lot of our clients, you know, you've somebody, you're somebody who maybe built an agency or a service business. And again, this will apply to you much in the same way if you have a product business. Well, let's say I'm going to talk about service business here. If you built your agency five, 10 years, maybe, you're, maybe you built it for, for 20 years and you're somewhere around a million. Let's play with that as, a, as an easy number. You've been in business for a long time. Now the question is, at some point when you step down or sell your shares or give them or whatever you do, how much is your company worth? Here's the sobering, not so nice truth. If you're making a million in sales, let's say a million dollars in sales, and let's say you're making 15% in EBITDA, which is a fancy word for net profit, after all the costs, before taxes, uh, deductions, uh, amortizations, uh, that kind of stuff, you're making 150K, which is not bad. The average for agencies, uh, for service businesses in the professional service firm is actually somewhere like 6 to 7%, which is appalling. It's really bad. I mean, it's good. Maybe if you're an airliner, I don't know, but like for a small company to make 6% is terrible. Even 15% is not something you should be content with. But let's say you're making 150K, which let's face it, you're probably in the top 10% of companies. But let's say 150K. Now, what is the company worth? Your company is worth typically between one to five times uh, net profits. Now, there's a big if here, but let's say, okay, 150K, somebody would buy it maybe for two times your net profit, so that's 300K. Now, is that good? Let's say you put in 20 years of work, and most of your years, maybe you weren't profitable, sometimes you're turning a profit, now you're at 150K, but 300K for your life's work, that's terrible, to be honest. And uh, the big question mark here, like how much are they going to pay is going to be dependent on how you built your business because it's very likely that you are the operator or you, or maybe your partner, you are operators, which mean when you walk out the door, how can they rely on the rest of the company if you have employees to keep the company at the same level because all the relationships are yours you're the one who brought in all the clients. You're like the linchpin. You're the one that were involved in all the client work. Now, that makes your company technically worthless. And I want to say this just to raise your awareness around this issue, because at some point, 
you will get tired of your business and you want to sell it, you want to exit it, you want to leave it. Trust me, if you're in your mid 40s, you're probably feeling it a little bit already. I'm in my mid 40s, but if you're like in your mid 50s, I'm sure that you're, you're already thinking about this. But so what are some ways, what are some strategies, what can you do to make sure that you don't sell your company for no money? And uh, I, you know, I want to, I want to, by the way, I want to, I want to share a quick story that I uh, heard from, from somebody who I know, I know really well, who built a company who's about 30 million, 30 million euros. So maybe $35 million in kind of the, the PR space. And he said, when young guys come to him, they want to sell their agency, they ask for a ton of money. They're like in their 30s and mid 30s. And they're like, you know, it's worth millions. If, if they did 1 million, they want to ask 10 million for it. The same people that are, or people in the same industry that come and they're in their 50s, they're willing to give away their business for free because they realize they built it the wrong way. And that's again, that's the topic of this episode. I don't want that to be you. Okay, so what does the solution look like? Well, um, it starts with the mindset. The first mindset shift is that you have to, you have to, have to, have to shift your mindset from an operator to a business owner. A business owner is somebody who builds the business and owns it and thinks of the business as an investment primarily, even though they might choose to work in some capacity within the business, but they're not part of the operations in a way that makes the business dependent on them, which is the number one reason why so many service businesses are more or less worthless because everything is dependent on the owner, which means that the valuation, the multiple is so low. Like let's take a recurring business, for example, that has a lot of automation, you know, a sauce company or something like that. The valuation for like a subscription type business can be, you know, 15 times. It could be even more than that. Of course, if you have something else that links to few, you know, you know, growth in cash flow or whatever it is that that can increase the the value of the company other than pure, um, you know, profits times a multiple. But let's say you could sell your agency for a multiple of ten to fifteen times instead of zero to five times. And it's going to be dependent first on the shift that you're making to start to remove yourself, not only as the bottleneck, as the business owner, but as the operator. That's going to be the first sh shift. The other shift ha might have to do with your whole business model and your offerings. So the more that you can productize, standardize, and build systems, the more you can remove yourself, which means the valuation of the company will go up, especially if you can turn a profit more predictably. Predictability is key when it comes to valuations, right? So those are like kind of two major shifts, like first your mindset and then what you do with that mindset is where you start to first make your company profitable by productizing, by simplifying, by standardizing, then by systematizing and let's say if you're able to do this really well, let's say you have a 1 million company making 15% net profit, so 150,000. Let's say, um, and I'm going to say, let's say you and I work together because we do this as, as our business model. But let's say we work together, we partnered up, we helped you get to 2 million in sales. So we doubled the sales, whether that took 12 months or 24 months or, or even three years, depending on what it is, it doesn't matter in this example. And then we were able to go from 15% to 25% net profit. It depends on the business model. You could be making, I made 45% net profit in my business when I had fully productized it. But let's say we could conservatively, let's go with 25. Now, suddenly you have 500,000 in net profit in EBITDA instead of 150,000. Now, if you've built it the right way, let's say you have a recurring model, you've sw switched up your business model a bit, suddenly we might be looking at like a, let's say a 10x multiplier. So now your business is worth 5 million instead of the company that was worth zero to maybe 500,000 before. So we've 10x the value of your company by making these changes. Not only will this allow you to step out of the business whenever you want and sell it, or just sit on it and have a great cash cow for the rest of your life. So this is something that you really need to start thinking about well before you want to exit your company. And if you want to, you know, get some more help, some more advice, 
please reach out to me because I'd love to have a conversation, especially if you're somewhere, you know, more than 500,000, a million or a few million, and you want to make your business exit proof, you want to maximize the valuation, just so you can either own a great cash cow or then prepare for exiting it. This is what we do. We're bringing out something new uh, at The Simple Company that is geared up to really help people who are in this space. If you want to talk to me about that, reach out to Tobias at thesimplecompany.com and we will uh, have a conversation. Let's see if we can help you. Go to thesimplecompany.com as well for more resources. And again, I'll be looking forward to speaking to you soon again. Take care.